So I'll move on and show you what we're going to talk about today. So this is the agenda. So I'm going to start very briefly by talking about why geoscientists actually need this new feature. And um, quite often in, in Petrasys, uh, we release features because clients have asked us to, um, because they require it. But in other sites and other workflows, people might not be aware of exactly why we uh, we develop them. So just to make sure everybody's on the same page, I will explain why uh, we felt this feature was needed. I'll then go into a demonstration using uh, Petra the software to show you how this actually works in practice and what you can actually do with it. And then there'll be a very short summary. So why do geoscientists actually need this feature which creates fault polygons from uh, fault sticks? Well, when, uh, when you're doing interpretation, as many of you will know, the, the way to interpret fault planes is often to interpret them as fault sticks, as you can see on this little image here. Now these fault sticks uh, interpret the entire fault plane um, right through all of the, the horizons and for interpretation purposes fault sticks work um, very well um, which is why I guess they are used so often. The problem is that when mapping or when creating a surface we're really only interested in displaying one surface at a time. Now you can see from the image I've displayed here if you create a, a surface or a map with that one horizon then it's really no, uh, there's no use to display those fault sticks. They make the, the map look very messy. Obviously the fault sticks are relevant for the entire fault plane rather than just uh, for that particular horizon. So they're really no use for mapping. So what we use instead for mapping are fault polygons. Now fault polygons uh, show the limit of the fault plane within that one surface and they make the map uh, much tidier and show much, um, much better detail than uh, fault sticks. Now the point I'm trying to get to is that the current methods to go from the interpretation stage from the fault sticks to the, the mapping to the fault polygons, the current methods are uh, very time consuming and often will generate fault polygons that are not very accurate. Now there's a couple of examples of what people do um, to, to convert the fault sticks to fault polygons. The first thing that we see a lot of clients uh, doing within their interpretation systems is to manually digitize the fault polygons. So they will display the interpretation, they will, uh, there will be gaps uh, within the interpretation where the fault sticks uh, uh, would run, and they will manually digitize using some sort of editor within the interpretation tool, they will manually digitize the fault polygons. Now, that might be fine if you've only got two or three faults to digitize, but if you look at this example on the right, this is by no means a, a you know, a, there's by no means a lot of faults in this area, but you might have 20 faults, for example. If you imagine digitizing each of those fault polygons for 20 different horizons, very quickly you're going to have to start digitizing an unrealistic number of fault polygons. So it's sometimes this uh, workflow is just completely unrealistic. Now the other alternative that we see people doing is to build up some sort of geological um, model, a static model, a framework model, whatever um, it might be called, where the fault sticks um, are converted to fault planes and you start building an interrelationship of horizons. Now this uh, does work, um, but to generate accurate fault polygons this does take some time, it's quite an iterative process and uh, for many situations it's far more work than is actually needed to simply generate a map or a surface. So where does Petra just come in then? Well, in this new tool, you can, uh, with this new tool, and with combining with other Petrus's features, geoscientists can do a few things. Now, in the demonstration, I'm going to focus on these four points. So I'll uh, introduce the four points, and then I'll go on to the demonstration. The first thing that uh, geoscientists can do with this new tool is to create fault polygons from the fault sticks very quickly and very accurately. It's actually a very simple process, and like I said, I'll take you through that in the, the demonstration. The second thing this tool allows you to do is to QC the interpretation uh, of your fault sticks by displaying the results on the map. So you can see I've displayed the, the fault polygons on the map, and quite clearly in this area, there's some problems with them. And what you can do is you can go back to the, the fault stick interpretation and reinterpret based on these problems. And again, I'll show you that in the demonstration. Third thing you can do is to improve the fault polygons if required. So you can do this in an automatic uh, approach when you first generate the polygons and um, by applying a smoothing factor. The second thing you can do is to manually reinterpret the fault polygons using the Petrus's graphical editing, editing tool called the Spatial Editor. The fourth thing um, that's quite an important point is that you can easily export these results back to other formats. 
So purchases is tightly integrated with a range of different um, applications. And so you don't need to, uh, to worry about have it, having everything reformatted to be able to use um, in another, uh, another system. You can simply press some buttons and purchase this and it will do it for you. So exporting the results so that you can continue with your, um, your other uh, modeling uh, requirements is important. So I'll jump out of PowerPoint and I'll go into the, the software. Now let me just open up Petrel just to show you what I'm using today. Um, now I'm using a Petrel data set. We do support other fault stick types and I'll show you those um, as we go through. The data that I have available is a 3D interpretation. So you can see these 3D points here. And I also have some fault sticks. And I'm going to, first of all, just display those in Petrisys as you see here. And I'm going to show you the, the new tool. Um, so I'll open up surface modeling. So part one of this uh, demo then is to show you how easy it is to create the fault polygons from the fault sticks. Now, I'll double click on this task here. Now, if you're not familiar with Petrisys, and I'm going a little bit fast here, please let me know and I can easily rerun this with a little bit more um, in depth or slow down a little bit more at a, a later date um, for yourself. Um, I just want to run through this fairly quickly just to show you the new feature. Now, the two things that I'm doing within this task here, the first is to go into the input data and you'll see I'm connected directly to my Petrel project and I'm connected to the interpretation. The second thing that I'm doing is I'm using the fault sticks data from Petrel. Now, in previous versions of Petrisys, it was only fault polygons you could use. You can now use fault sticks and if I open up this panel here, you'll see we can use Dug Insight, Paradigm, Petrel and SizeWorks um, or, or Landmark uh, faults. Now, if there's a a software package you use um, and we don't support it under the fault sticks tab there, please do let me know after the the, uh, the webinar, either by um, email or by uh, talking to me directly. It's very important we understand what our clients need, um, otherwise we won't be able to add um, that in. So when you're connected to the fault sticks, just in case of cl um, simply clicking OK and we can run through that. Now what that will do is it will uh, calculate the intersection of the horizon with the fault sticks and it will generate a nice fault polygon with the nice um, grid and contours for me. So like I said, very easy to, to create this. When that's finished, I'll just go back to my map and I'll just simply show you the results, which is this there here. So you can see it's generated these fault polygons with the nice contours uh, coming around them there as well. So the, the value here, the, the value proposition I'm trying to show is that it's very fast and very easy to create these accurate fault polygons using this tool. The second thing that's of value here is that by using the, the powerful surface modeling module, you can create hundreds of fault polygons um, very easily. So I've created uh, four horizons here, and I've just simply copied and pasted the tasks to create the fault polygons for each of those horizons. And if I just go back and I'll just show you the, the results of these, it takes about two minutes to run through all four of those tasks. I don't want to do it in the webinar, but it's really not um, too time consuming at all. Within the, the powerful surface modeling, you can also do things like loop over um, existing tasks or loop over horizons. So in theory, if I have 100 horizons within Petrel, I could loop over those 100 horizons, um, go away for 10 minutes, come back, and I would have 100 fault polygon sets um, generated here. So very powerful to use that tool as well. Okay, part two of this presentation then is to show you how we can use this tool to QC our full stick interpretation. Now to do this, I'm going to toggle off most of these fault polygons and I'll toggle on the horizon interpretation and just focus in on this area here. Now you can see here quite clearly there's a couple of problems. First of all, this fault polygon doesn't match the, the gaps in the interpretation. Second thing is the fault polygon up in this northern area is quite jagged. So at this stage, I can now go back to my interpretation package and look at why that was. Now, if I go back to the trail, the first thing I'll do is just focus in on this area here, which is where the, the fault polygon uh, didn't match the, the gap in the interpretation. And if I go to the trail, you'll see this light green fault stick set running through here. And in this northern area, the fault stick doesn't actually propagate all the way through that uh, particular fault. It stops short of the upthrown side of the fault. So quite clearly, there's something gone wrong in my interpretation. I could now go back and reinterpret this fault. And because I have the, the surface modeling workflow set up, I could just simply rerun this and it would uh, update all of my, uh, my maps um, interactively because I'm connected directly to Petrel. Now, the second area where there was a problem is up in the northern end of the, the fault 
uh, here where I have this jagged fault. And again, if I go back to my Petrel project, this is the northern end and this is the fault stick set um, in that area. Now, if you look at the, the fourth fault stick from the right, so this one here that I'm trying to highlight, and hopefully you can see that, if I start to zoom around, you'll see that that actually propagates right into the horizon. So it's not actually at the, the fault and the, the horizon intersection, it's actually propagating right into the, the horizon itself. And so that's why we've generated this very jaggy um, fault polygon. So spotting mistakes like this is very easy. Now, like I said, you could go to your interpretation package. Because we're connected directly to it, it would be very easy to rerun the task in Petrisys. However, what we'll do at this stage is move on to part three um, of the, the presentation, which is to show you how we can improve the, the fault polygons using Petrisys. Now, there are two options to improve the fault polygons. The first thing is the automatic method. If I go back into the faults tab, you'll see there's an option to smooth the fault polygons. Now you can smooth by a low, a medium, or a high amount. I'll just choose medium, and I'll just run through that task. And what you'll find is that once I've chosen that option, all of these, uh, this jagged interpretation here um, has been removed. Now obviously if your fault stick interpretation is perfect, then you don't need to do this, but in the real world, imaging faults is, uh, is not an exact sign. So uh, using this um, smoothing option can allow you to generate uh, realistic fault polygons without having to spend uh, hours and hours reinterpreting all your fault sticks. So if I go back to the map, I'll click refresh and you can see those jags um, are now away. Now one thing it hasn't done um, is alter this fault polygon here. So I'll show you the second option to, uh, to edit the faults and that's the manual option using our graphical editing tool called the spatial editor. Now you can use this tool to edit faults or contours or spatial data. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the, the vertex option to move some of these vertices to the right location. And you can see it's quite easy to, uh, to move these. You can also add in new vertices if I want um, and drag these like so. An alternative is I could come in and just simply remove an entire section of the fault polygon. And then I could use the digitizer to come back in, either click um, single click like this or click once and drag, whatever you, you prefer. Either way, you get the fault polygon that you look, uh, you're looking for. And also I could spend longer improving this, but for the purposes of demonstration, you can see it is easy enough to, to reinterpret these fault polygons. Now at this stage, I could go back and I could rerun the, the grid task um, with my fault polygons to update the contour set. I won't do that here. What we'll do is move on to the last part of this presentation, which is to show you how easy it is to move these results into other formats. Now, if I go back to my Petrel project, I'll go to the 2D window and I'm just going to toggle off everything on the screen there. So there's nothing being displayed at the moment inside Petrel. I'll go back to Petrisys. I've got my fault polygon here. I can simply right click on that and export that as spatial data. Now, I can export it to Excel, File Geo Database, Google Earth, um, Shapefile, a number of Petrisys formats. What I'm going to do is push it inside of Petrel. And if I push it inside Petrel, I'll just tell it that this is a fault polygon and I'll just give it a name. Click OK, and that will push that inside of my Petrel project now. So I'll go back to Petrel. You can see my fault polygon data set is there. And if I expand the tree, you'll see I now have a fault polygon layer. And I can do whatever I would usually do um, with that fault polygon layer uh, within Petrel. Final thing to point out is that I've done this from the map. However, there are export options available from the powerful surface modeling module. So again, if I had, had generated 100 fault polygons or 100 fault polygon layers, I could export all of those back in one click using this powerful tool. Okay, so let me just move back to the PowerPoint and I'll just summarize what we've talked about. I've actually just got the same uh, slide uh, that I had before, so I'll just make sure that I've just reiterate those points, make sure I've covered everything. So using this new option within Petrisys, the chief scientist can create fault polygons from the fault stacks very quickly and very accurately. Second thing they can do is to QC the interpretation of their fault stick by displaying the results and working with uh, the two packages um, interactively, whether it's Betrayal or whether it's something else. Third thing is you can improve the fault polygons within Petrisys, either by the automatic smoothing or by the manual editing. And when you have finished and you've got the fault polygons you require, you can obviously create nice maps within Petrisys um, and use them for presentation, or you can export the results to other formats to continue using them. So thank you very much for listening to this. 